اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فویل للذین یکتبون الكتاب بیعیدیہم ثم یکولون حاضا من اند اللہ لیشترو بہی ثمنا قلیلا وویل لہم مما کتبت ایدیہم وویل لہم مما یکسبو صدق اللہ صدق اللہ من الرزیم Notice what he quotes, ladies and gentlemen. He quotes Surah 2, verse 79. Because he wants to talk about the corruption of the Bible. Does he bother to address the fact that the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the gospel that Christians have in our possession? No. Does he address the fact that Surah 2, verse 79 of the Quran is about Muhammad's interactions with Jews. No. Does he address the fact that if you look at what the passage actually says, there is no way at all that it is talking about even the corruption of the Jewish scriptures? No. He ignores all of that and acts like it's talking about the gospel. Why? Why do they do this, right? Yeah, yeah. Someone, someone, way, someone who's been through that, these guys have to know that that is not talking about the gospel. They still represent it yeah. that way to their viewers. Why? They know their viewers don't know any better and that they're going to fall for this and that they're going to believe what they're told. And so they're just, again, I just said it. I just said it. They're founding their, their religion upon pillars of deception. And then, well, then you get people like us coming in and wreaking havoc. All right, go ahead, Sam. No, just to say, by the way, that is from the Jimmy Swagger debate. Oh, awesome. Let you know. Awesome. That so I can go. That is from the Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy cool, Swagger cool, cool. Debate. So I will, go to, I will go to that debate. I will find the original yeah. because, Sam, my goodness, yeah. if we just. We're going to have a field day with that. We're going to have a field day. This is the Roman Catholic version of the Bible. The Douay or Reims version of the Bible. This is an encyclopedia of 73 books. Seven more than the King James Version. You use certain technical terms like, like apocrypha, which the masses of Christendom do not know. What is this apocrypha? Apocrypha means doubtful, weak, not deserve to be in the book of God. As such, the Protestants threw it out as a fabrication. These seven books are thrown out from here. Now you tell me that this is the word of God. He seems to think that that Protestants start off with a Catholic Bible of se containing 73 books, and then yeah. Protestants decide, hey, we want to throw out. We want to throw out these books. Is, it, is, that, a, is that an accurate uh, assessment of, of history? Absolutely not. This is, a, this is why this is an in-house discussion between Christians, brothers and sisters born of the Spirit who love Jesus Christ. This is a debate that's not going to be settled until the Lord comes. One of the chief reasons why Protestants do not accept the Deuterocanonicals, as Catholics call them, what Protestants call the Apocrypha, is because they're convinced and they believe that the Jews historically never viewed those books as sacred scripture. Now, obviously, you have Catholics, Orthodox who disagree, because I, I, I've studied this issue a little bit, David, because of the Muslims, actually. They forced me to study this issue way back. I know there are Catholics and Orthodox who actually believe that you pretty much had two canons functioning at the time of Christ. The longer canon, the larger canon, uh, the Septuagint of the Alexandrian Jews, and then the smaller, shorter canon, canon of what scholars say, <clears throat> Palestinian Jews. They use the term Palestinian, even though it wasn't called Palestine at the time. Now, however, the evidence from before, during, and after the time of Christ shows that you can't really argue that the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, had these additional books because, unfortunately for us, all the extant copies of the Greek version of the Old Testament were produced by Christian scribes after the time of Christ. So we don't really have any complete translation of the books of the Bible in Greek before and during the time of Christ. But again, to repeat, <clears throat> the reason why Protestants don't accept those books is because they believe and are convinced that the Jews historically never viewed them as scripture. That's why. But another caveat, let me add a final caveat. Some people already know this. Are you guys aware that the King James translators did translate the Apocrypha, the Deuterocanonicals in English, and made it part of their translation? It was included in the original King James of 1611. But they did make sure to notify the readers that they didn't view it as sacred scripture, but they couldn't simply ignore it because there are many Christians who were raised on the Deuterocanonicals, the Apocrypha, and it does have helpful information. 
it has beneficial information that benefits even those who don't believe in its inspiration. But we'll talk about that some other time. Mm -hmm. D. Dot, he talks about these disagreements, and you can take different Bibles and so on. There are always reasons for everything, right? There are always reasons. He doesn't go through the reasons. He just he just explains the differences. And what what we really want to explain is suppose suppose. In a cave somewhere, we found all of the earliest Qurans, all of the earliest editions of the Quran. Suppose that instead of, suppose that the guy who was ordered to burn them all by Uthman actually took them and hid them in a cave, and we and we found them all. And we suppose we go in there and we find Ibn Masud's Quran. It has 111 chapters in it. Suppose we go and we find Ubay ibn Kabs Quran, and it has 116. Could you have reasons for saying, you know what, I want to go with with Ibn Masud on this one? Yes, of course you could. Of course you could. Of course, of course, there are reasons. You say Muhammad said, if you want to learn from anyone, learn from this guy. So therefore, I'm going with this Quran. Imagine you were sitting there looking at this, right? And so some people said, hey, I'm going to go with Ibn Masud's Quran. Some people said, hey, we're going with Ubay ibn Kab's Quran. Why would you go with Ubay ibn Kab's Quran? Ubay says he took everything directly from the mouth of Muhammad. Didn't learn it from anywhere else. He got it directly from the mouth of Muhammad. Okay, well, maybe I want to take what he says seriously. Exactly. Uh, Zayd ibn Thabit. Zayd ibn Thabit. So you could you could argue well well his his is the Quran that that became prominent in Islam later, and so we'll we'll go with him. You could have arguments. You could lay out criteria for why you're going with each one of these Qurans. Now suppose you didn't. No one explained the reasoning. Say here's why I'm going with Ibn Masud. Here's why I'm going with Zayd ibn Thabit. Here's why I'm going with this one. And you just said, look, look, they've got all these different Qurans. What a joke. It's so stupid. Oh my goodness. They're just, these guys are all, oh, they're, they're all deleting, they're all deleting chapters. So, so Ibn Masud, look at him. He's throwing out chapters of the Quran. And Ubay, Ubay ibn Kab, he, he's, he's adding chapters to the Quran that were never seen before and so on. It would, you would look at that and you would say, man, you, you might want to actually be more accurate and go through their discussions because assuming that someone's right, assuming that someone's right here, you can actually, you could actually go through the evidence and maybe come up on a, a, a true position. I don't think there is one. I think it's just, I think it's, uh, it's just a mess in Islam. Yeah. But what DDOT is doing is just, look, hey, these people are discovering more and more manuscripts and they're, they're discovering more and more things. And they actually have some disagreements about the canon. He doesn't explain the, 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 the reasoning for those and why they have these disagreements. It's just, uh, look. 7366 you see how they you see how christians got that problem we don't have that problem in islam why because we lie about it more ahmed d dot coming ladies and gentlemen here we go a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim fa wailul lil ladhina yaktubuna al kitaba bi aydihim thumma yaquluna hadha min indillah liyashtaru bihi thamanan kalila وَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا كَتَبَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَكْسِبُونَ صدق الله صدق الله من الرزيق You tell me that this is the word of God the King James Version with his 66 books this was first published in 1611 by order of His Majesty King James whose name is still based today authorized version authorized by who? not God Almighty by King James, he authorized it, not God Almighty. Now, it goes back to the ancient manuscripts. I'm told, what is ancient? It says four to six hundred years after Jesus is ancient. Now we have access to the most ancient manuscripts, most ancient. And this translation here, or version, the RSV, the Revised Standard Version, goes to the most ancient manuscripts. They date from two to three hundred years after Jesus. So closer to the source, the more authentic any document would be, closer to the source. This is common sense. If Jesus, in the time of Jesus, if this was written and he had signed it, autographed it, shh, no questions asked. This is two to three hundred years after, this is four to six hundred years after. So they published this translation, published in your own country here, as well as in Britain, Canada, all these countries, simultaneously you produce this Bible. And we are told some glowing tributes are being paid to this translation. Guys, even if you don't like the Revised Standard Version, I want to now invite you to do something for me. 
specifically the New Testament. I want you to go online, like BibleGateway.com. I want you to put King James and Ryan Ry Standard Version side by side. And when you read through the New Testament, go through the chapter. If you don't find that these two translations agree over 95% of the time, you can come and chew me out and say, Sam, you don't know what you're talking about. You shouldn't be doing apologetics. This is the dishonesty and the deception of this man. The impression he's giving is, and I have to make this, I mm -hmm. want to repeat this, that if you pick up the Revised Standard Version, you're going to get a different God, a different Jesus, a different spirit, and a different message of salvation is going to make you closer to Islam. Baloney, that's a lie from the pit of hell. The differences are, there are a few readings where they disagree, but the most part, the differences have to do with the translation of the Greek terms. And I'll give you one point real quickly, because he brings it up. Mm -hmm. The King James translators render a Greek word, monogenes, as only begotten. Yeah. The translators of the Revised Standard Version felt that monogenes is more accurately translated as unique or one and only. This, this is the kind of differences that you find. But either way, either if you want to say Jesus is only begotten son or the one and only son, you end up with Jesus being the unique son of God, and therefore Muhammad is a false prophet. Perfect. So don't let this con artist and his fancy rhetoric deceive you from the truth. But go ahead. This is a di this is a translation difference, right? He's saying, yeah. ah, it says right, ah, in the King James it says only begotten. And in the Revised Standard, it's, it's what are they translated as? Unique? Something like that? that that's, yeah, that's only, it. only son. Yeah. The only son. Yeah. So, and, and, and why? Because the Greek term can mean those things, right? That's it. Yeah. So, that's so, it. so no, no, notice, if we, if we wanted to do that, if we wanted to go that route, I could take two translations of the Quran, put them side by side, and with, that give two different translations of the same word. And whichever one I start with, I say, okay, so you see, he's saying this verse means this. But oh, this guy changes it. He changes it. Oh, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. He says it should be translated this way. You see how the book is changing here? This is amazing. And, and he, he, doesn't, oh, he, he doesn't explain any of this to the people who are watching, right? All the Muslims, whether it's DDOT or Zakir Naik or any of these guys, when they point this stuff out, yeah. they know that the Muslim audience is thinking that we have all these like, completely different Bibles that say all these different things. And some of them agree with Islam and others don't agree with Islam. And we're all just confused and we don't know. We, and we go with the ones that we prefer and ignore the ones that support Islam. And, and th they think that that's actually what's going on. It's complete nonsense, right? This is massive deception here. UK, England says, the most accurate and close rendering of the original. Now, Prepare for the shock. I said, prepare for the shock. From these 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say, yet the King James Version has grave defects. And that these defects are so many and so serious. They are, these are not my words. They are so, they are so many and so serious as to call for revision in the English translation. Call for revision in the revised it. David, I want to, even the part he read, mm -hmm. if you guys paid attention, it's right here on the screen, I froze it. The King, yet the King James Version has great defects. Now notice what it means. That these defects are so many so serious as to call for revision of the English mm -hmm. translation. Yep. It's talking about the English, right? English translation, the English because it's 1611 archaic and also some of the choices they made was deemed to be to be not as accurate to the original wording by these scholars so but again don't take my word for it don't take david's word mm -hmm. for it pick up the revised standard version king james and you can do it online put it side by side if they don't agree over 95 percent of the time i don't know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. and the differences are having to do with how to translate the original language should it be unique one and only, begotten, virgin, young maiden. That's the difference. But the mm -hmm. theology is the same. Christology is the same. <clears throat> Pneumatology, it's the same. But anyway, he has to spin it. He has to make yeah. it much more worse than it is for shock value in order to keep Muslims inoculated by his brainwashing so they don't read the Bible and take its message mm -hmm. seriously. That's what it is. Yeah, and uh, j just think again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, matter of fact... Uh, Let's just. I want to. I want to check out a couple of passages from the Hadith here to try and illustrate a, a few points. Right. 
All right, so this is Sahil Bukhari, 4977. Narrated Zur bin Hubaysh, I asked Ubay ibn Kab, O Abu al Mundir, your brother Ibn Masud said so and so, i.e., the two, the, this is referring to the two chapters at the end of the Quran, Surah 113 and Surah 114. According to Ibn Masud, those were not part of the Quran. These were not part of the Quran and do not belong in the Quran. So, uh, he's saying Ibn Masud said that these chapters do not belong in the Quran. Ubay said, I asked Allah's messenger about them. I asked Allah's messenger about them. And he said, they have been revealed to me and I have recited them as part of the Quran. So Ubay added, so we say as Allah's messenger has said. Now notice, Ibn Masud admittedly said that these two, the, the final two chapters of the Quran, Surah 113, Surah 114, do not belong in the Quran. So this issue is brought to Ubay, Ibn Kab. He And they asked Ubay, hey, what, what do you say? And Ubay says, well, you know, I, I got this direct, I got this directly from, uh, from the messenger. I got this from Muhammad who, who recited them to me. And so Muslims will say, aha, well, there you have it. Ubay, <clears throat> Ubay had confirmation from Muhammad that the, you know, these are supposed to be in the Quran. Problem solved. Well, one, that's, that's the problem has not been solved because Muhammad said, if you want to learn the Quran from anyone, learn it from Ibn Masud, right? Learn it from Ibn Masud. So the question is, why would Muhammad's top reciter of the Quran be wrong about what was even supposed to be in the Quran? So that's, that's problem number one. Problem number two, let's scroll down to number uh, 5005 here. Narrated Ibn Abbas. Umar said, Ubay was the best of us in the recitation of the Quran. So no, no, notice, notice the people who are involved here. This is Ibn Abbas, one of the best of all time, citing Umar, one of Muhammad's closest companions, the second rightly guided caliph, um, talking about Ubay, Ubay, who was on the list of Muhammad's four best reciters of the Quran. And he says, Ubay was the best of us in the recitation of the Quran, yet we leave some of what he recites. We leave some of what he recites. So Ubay is quoting as part of the Quran, certain things that the rest of Muslims were not quoting. And then if you asked Ubay about it, Ubay says, I have taken it from the mouth of Allah's messenger and will not leave it for anything, whatever. And here you have, here you have them trying to justify this. They say, ah, whatever a verse revelation, do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten? We bring one better than it, uh, one better or similar to it. Now, now notice here, notice what you have here, ladies and gentlemen. You've got Ubay saying, I'm not going to leave this stuff off as a recitation of the Quran because I got this from Muhammad himself. And they say, yeah, 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 but we're, we're saying, you know, we say it's been abrogated, so, so we're not quoting all of the stuff you quote. But think about this. Think about this. That's the same thing he said. That's the same thing Ubay said about the dispute over wh whether the last two chapters are in there, right? So, so they say, Ubay, Ibn Masud says these aren't actually supposed to be in there. He says, what are you talking about? I got it, I got it directly from Muhammad. So, so in Muslims there say, you see, Ubay says it's supposed to be in the Quran. Therefore, it's supposed to be in the Quran. And here, here they're saying, yeah, every, you can't trust everything Ubay says about what's supposed to be in the Quran. And Ubay says, what are you talking about? I got this directly from Muhammad. I got this stuff directly from Muhammad. What is it? Not only his additional chapters, but his additions to passages all throughout the Quran. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, um, think about this. And, and there, by the way, there are plenty more passages we could go to. But one, Muslims don't know any of this, right? You, you, can, you can line up the Muslims here. Unless they've been watching our channel for a while and watching my videos for a while, or reading Sam's articles, they don't know any of this. Their leaders do not discuss it. Here's what's amazing. You can pick up a copy. Uh, the reason I'm pointing all this out is you can pick up the Revised Standard Version. Open it up. And they start talking about the issues involved here, right? Their translations issues, their manuscript issues. Well, guess what? From the very origin of Islam, they couldn't even agree on what was supposed to be in the, in the Quran. They couldn't agree on, uh, on who was right about what's supposed to be in the Quran or who had the right reading. They had to kind of just, just do the best they could. And their solution was, we'll pick one and burn all the rest. 
and then everyone else has to agree or, 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 or there's going to be problems, right? That was the solution in Islam. So the solution in Islam was to cover all of this up and pretend that it's not happening. Perfect. Um, and now, now that that has been their method for the past 14 centuries, pretend that they don't, that they don't have uh, disagreements about what's supposed to be in the Quran, uh, what's supposed to be in the Quran. Pretend that entire chapters didn't come up missing. Pretend that large passages didn't come up missing. Pretend that verses weren't eat by, eaten by a sheep. Pretend that you can't, you know, you, you can't line up manuscripts and spot the differences. We'll pretend that in Islam there's none of that, and we'll lie to our entire population and tell them that there is no dispute, perfect preservation right down to the letter. Then we'll look over at Christians and say, Ah, you see this? Look right here in their own Bibles, in the introduction to their own Bibles, they're admitting that they have differences in their manuscripts. They're admitting that they can translate things differently. Oh my goodness, do you see how do you see what a what a sloppy religion that is? What you guys are really saying is Christians are honest. <laughs> Christians are honest. The ladies and gentlemen, the position of Christians is that anytime you have human beings copying and recopying manuscripts over centuries, you're going to have issues. You're you're going to have textual variants. It's going to happen. Right. We we the, just the people who are watching here, me, Sam, those of you who are here, we could all sit down. If you try and copy the Bible, we're all going to come up with different with different editions of the Bible in the sense that we're all going to make mistakes as we're as we're writing, 100%. right? And Muslims would look at that and say, "You see? You see what a, what a what a corrupt religion." Not realizing if you you the same holds true with Islam. If you sit there and copy the entire Quran, you're going to make mistakes. And somehow Muslims think, nope, Allah would miraculously keep you from ever making a mistake. And their entire manuscript tradition shows that that's false. Uh, the the sloppiness of the Islamic methodology uh, is evident, and even in your own sources, which talk about different chapters and so on. So, at the end of the day, it's Christians are honest about the evidence. That's why you can walk into any Christian bookstore and get a book on Bible variants and things like that. You can look. You can, you can look at those things. So notice, you've got Muslim apologists. They pretend that they don't have these things, so they're lying. And then they act like the variants in Christian manuscripts and so on help Islam when they don't, right? When they don't. If you actually look, if you're an actual, if you're, an, when actual scholars go through the manuscripts, there's there's nothing there that there's nothing there that hurts Christianity in any way. There's nothing that helps Islam in any way. These same guys who lie to Muslims about the status of the Quran and the history of the Quran, the same guys that lie about that also make it sound like, oh yeah, Christians have all these have all these different Bibles and so on. Anyway, I wanted that I just wanted to point that out. Okay, you heard what he said, right? The Dewey Reims, which is the English translation of the Latin Vulgate, by the way. For those of you who don't know, and I highly recommend you read the Dewey Reims. The Dewey Reims. It's online, it's on BibleGateway.com. Read it so you can see what the Latin Vulgate says. And you again will be shocked, not shocked, you shouldn't be shocked, of how, how much it agrees with the King James and other versions. Because that's just the nature of the manuscripts, folks. They agree over 90% of the time you're going to get the same theology. Now put that, put that aside. Which Bible should I follow? The Dewey Reign, 73, the Catholic Bible, or the Protestant, 66 of the King James? Folks... For the Muslim, the Quran settles it for them. The Quran settles it for them. And again, I'm going to encourage you to go on Answering Islam blog, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. I have an actual article responding to responding to Ahmad Didat, this very issue. So what's the answer for the Muslim? The answer is simple. The Quran tells the Muslim, the Quran tells the Muslim, that as far as the Old Testament is concerned, as far as the Old Testament is concerned, the Old Testament was given to the Jews, Bani Israel, the ch children of Israel, the Yehud, the Jews, and it even tells the Muslims, Muslims, if you want to know anything about the sacred history of the Jews of Israel, ask them, consult them. So let me give you the verses. Chapter 17, verse 2. We gave Moses the book and made it a guide to the children of Israel. Chapter 17, verse 2. And I'm going to give you enough verses to show you. This is the repeated teaching of the Quran. Go to the Jews. Go to the Israelites if you want to know about their sacred history. If you want to know about Moses and the Old Testament. Chapter 23, verse 49. And we gave Moses the book for Israel's guidance. Chapter 29, verses 26 to 27. 
And Lot believed him and said, Lo, I'm a fugitive unto my Lord. Lo, he, only he is the mighty, the wise. And we bestowed on him Isaac and Jacob, and we established the prophethood and scripture among his seed. Whose seed? Isaac's seed, Jacob's seed, Abraham's seed. So Muslims, your Quran is saying, you want to know what the scripture is and what prophet is all about? Go to the Israelites. Perfect. And if you still don't get it, chapter 40, verses 53 to 54. We did before time, after time, give Moses the book of guidance, and we gave the book in inheritance to the children of Israel, a guide and message to men of understanding. Now, chapter 45, verse 16. Indeed, we gave the children of Israel the book, the judgment, and the prophethood, and we provided them with good things, and we preferred them above all creatures, all beings. Mm. I got to read that one more time. I hope the Muslims, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, are hearing what their scripture tells them. I could care less what the Quran says. I could care less what Muhammad says. But you should care because you say you believe this man. Indeed, we gave the children of Israel the book, the judgment, and the prophethood. And we provided them with good things. And we preferred them above all creatures, above all beings. And then now notice what it says when you want to know something about Israel and their history. Who do you go to? Muhammad? The Christians? No. Chapter 2, verse 211 of the Quran. Ask of the children of Israel, how many a clear revelation we gave them? Wait, 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 wait. Muhammad, what did you say? Ask the children of Israel, how many a clear revelation we gave them? Ask Christians? No. Ask the children of Israel, how many revelations we gave them? If you want to know about this Christian scriptures, you go to Christians. You want to know about the revelations to the Jews? Go to the Jews. Chapter 17, verse 101. And verily, we gave unto Moses nine tokens, nine signs. In reality, it was ten. But put that aside. That blunder, we'll put aside. We verily gave unto Moses nine signs, clear proofs of Allah's sovereignty. Do but ask the children of Israel how he came unto them. Then Pharaoh said unto him, Lo, I deem thee one bewitched, O Moses. Muhammad confirms the scriptures in the hands of the Jews. He says, I confirm, and my Quran confirms what you Jews have in your possession. And he says that the Quran is actually an Arabic version, confirmation, of the book of Moses. So if I take what the Quran teaches as a whole, and if I'm a Muslim, Muslim, guess what? You don't go to the Catholic, you don't go to the Protestant, you don't go to the Orthodox. I'm not trying to offend Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox. This does not include you Christians. I'm talking to Muslims. Muslims are commanded by their Quran to go to the Jews and ask the Jews what books did God reveal to you as part of the Old Testament. And this is simply a fact, historical fact. At the time of Muhammad, the Jews accepted the 39 Old Testament books. These extra books, they didn't view as scripture. Now again, for the Catholics and the Orthodox, I'm not saying they're right. Let me just be clear. And I'm not trying to tickle your ears, and I'm not trying to be unnecessarily offensive. For the Catholics and Orthodox, I'm not saying they're right. What I'm saying is, that's what Muhammad forces Muslims to do, to consult the Jews, because Muhammad was talking to the Jews. That means Catholics and Orthodox. If these extra books are scripture, but for some reason, the Jews later rejected him. That's more proof that Muhammad is a fraud because he's going to the wrong group to know what the Old Testament is. So it works in your advantage, Catholics and Orthodox. It shows, Muhammad, what more proof do we need that you're a fraud? You're going to the Jews at your time that rejected these books that the Jews before Christ viewed as scripture. You're a fraud, and your Quran is a fraud, and your God is not the true God. Boom! In other words, no matter how you slice it and dice it, Muhammad ends up being a false prophet. Perfect. But as far as the Muslims are concerned, Muslims, you shouldn't be asking Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox, go to the Jews, and they'll tell you these are the books. Now, if the Jews are wrong, Muslims, that's more proof Muhammad is a fraud and a son of Satan. So the question for a Muslim, for someone like Ahmed Didat or for, for one of his followers now, the question should be, wait a minute, if Allah is commanding the Muslims during the time of Muhammad to go to the Jews because he's confirming those scriptures, 
the question would be, what did those Jews consider their canon scripture, their canonical scripture? And so Sam's pointing out those Jews of that time did not consider those seven books as canonical. And therefore, if, Muh if Muhammad's followers were to go to them and ask them, they would have said these books, but they wouldn't, even, they wouldn't have brought up. They wouldn't have brought up those seven yeah. books. So the Muslim should be saying right now, uh, a, a Muslim should be saying, oh, it doesn't make any sense for me to be bringing up this issue as if it's a problem for Christians. The Christians agree on the Christian books. The Christians agree on the explicitly Christian books. There are different Christian groups that disagree about the scriptures of the Jews, but according to the Quran, I'm supposed to go to the Jews about that, not to the Christians. Exactly. So the, 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 the disagreement among the Christians is completely irrelevant to Islam. I'm supposed to go to the Jews, and the Jews actually give an answer on this. And on this issue, they actually agree with, with, with the Protestants that you don't include those, those seven books as part of the canon. And what Sam is pointing out is, Catholics, you don't need to get or, you know, hurt your feelings. The, the Muslims, the, the, the Quran would either be right or wrong about that. If the Quran is, is whether the Quran's right or wrong, it doesn't, affect, it doesn't affect you. Assuming that he's wrong, if you want to say he's wrong about the canon, if, if you as a Catholic want to say, no, they're wrong about where you would go for the status of these seven deuterocanonical books, then... Great. That's just further. That would be further evidence from your perspective that Muhammad is it's a, a false prophet. prophet. Yeah, you as a Catholic should not care at all what what Muhammad says about the status of very book, various books. What we're pointing out is that if you're a Muslim, if you're a Muslim, you should not regard that 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 the point D dot is making as a serious problem at all because your Quran gives you the answer. Oh, they have a disagreement, 66 or 73. Well, your Quran says go with the 66 because it's, it's, it's for the disagreement is over the scriptures of the Jews. We would ask the Jews, the Jews would give us an answer and they would side with the 66. And therefore, as a Muslim, you should not think this is a problem. If you do regard it as a problem, then of course we would we would have to fall back on the fact that Muhammad's own companions couldn't even agree on which chapters are supposed to be in the Quran. We'll okay. ask and we'll have to ask you about your hypocrisy and inconsistency and why your why your scholars and your apologists lie about this and pretend these things didn't happen and why um, why your early companions of Muhammad burned all the manuscripts to cover up these differences. I mean I mean Sam, could you could you just imagine Catholics and Protestants? And one group just completely takes control, and then they gather all the they gather all the Bibles together, burn them all, and then one group just says, "This is the Bible. That's all there is to it." Yeah. And then regarding it as you see, we have no disagreements over over our scriptures. That's 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 what Muslims did, right? That's that's exactly what Muslims did, and Muslims think we're the ones with the problem because notice, guys, since we preserve our manuscripts. And since yeah. we preserve all of these discussions, and again, you can walk into any Christian bookstore and get a discussion of this, you, as a Christian, whether you're Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, you can actually sit down and say, here are the arguments of the Protestants. Here are the arguments of the Catholics. Here are the arguments of the Orthodox scholars. And here's their reasoning. Let me see who has the best case. And you can actually get to the truth. Muslims do not allow that. They don't allow you to even, they want you to, they want you to, be kept in a state of complete ignorance so that you don't know these things are even issues and they burn all the evidence so that you can never even possibly go through it right they don't want you to actually sit down and go let me let me check out ubay ibn Kab's quran let me check out ibn masood's quran let me check out zayd ibn thabit's quran let me compare all these and the reasoning for going with each one and make my decision no the islamic the islamic solution is burn it all and pretend it never happened perfect and so you just see two massive massive differences in the thinking of the two religions. One yeah. is always, hey, let's see who's got the best case here. Let's reason our way through this. Let's put all the evidence in front of us. Don't do not destroy the evidence. Let's put all the evidence out there. And guess what? As we learn more, we're, we, we're, we're going to make revisions. As we get more manuscripts, we might have to, we might have to, we might learn more about translations and so on. This is always a possibility. In Islam, it's always burn everything and pretend there's never been any differences. Yeah. Let me add a few points so I can help now our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ understand that we're not trying to isolate, alienate our brothers and sisters, and David and I hold the same view. Let's come back to the issue. We believe there are true believers born of the Spirit in all the major branches of Christianity. So let me just make a couple of points, and you guys can confirm this if you're Catholic Orthodox. It is irrelevant what Muhammad believes about the Old Testament. 
What do I mean? Muhammad can believe whatever of the Old Testament. It doesn't change the facts. So let's say Muhammad is wrong for appealing to the Jews and their understanding of the canon because the Jews rejected books to spite Christians and they were wrong. Well, that's fine and dandy. What we're trying to show is that if you're going to be a Muslim and you're going to remain with Muhammad, you're going to have to accept the Jewish canon. However, mm -hmm. we know, and the Catholics and the Orthodox can confirm this, we know that there are Muslims who become Catholic, and guess what? They accept the 73 books of the Bible. There are Muslims who become Orthodox. Guess what? They accept the 76 books of the Orthodox Church, right? You have even Jews, and here's what's it's even more amazing. You have Jews who become Catholic. Roy Schumann is a very famous Jewish convert to the Roman Catholic Church, and he's an evangelist who invites Jews to embrace the Catholic Church. He believes in the Trinity, Jesus Messiah, right? And Roy Schumann, as a Jew who's a Catholic, believes in the 73 books of the Bible. So he believes the Deuterocanonicals are inspired, which means he rejects the, the Jews' rejection of those books. Mm. You get my point? You have the association of Hebrew Catholics. So what am I getting at? Here's what I'm getting at. As far as Muslims are concerned, they are stuck with what the Quran says, go to the Jews. But we are not stuck with Muhammad. I could care less what Muhammad has to say. I am open to wherever the Holy Spirit will guide me, because the Holy Spirit is truth. He cannot lie and will guide me in all truth. So if the Spirit shows me these books are inspired, I have no reason to reject them. If they're not, then the Spirit will protect me. But that's what I'm trying to get at. But anyway, I hope those points are clear. Did everyone understand our points? Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant. You understand our point? D. Dot, Zechariah, Shabrali, they're all connivers, deceivers, right? Liars, because they should know better than to bring up the Catholic canon versus the Protestant canon, because they know their Quran says Muhammad confirmed the scriptures in the possession of the Jews, and Muhammad says it was the children of Israel, 45 or 16, that Allah entrusted with the prophethood, with the scripture and the commandment. So why are you now bringing up Catholic and Protestant differences when your prophet told you go to the Jews? Because they're liars, they're deceivers, they don't care about the truth, they don't care about what their, their own prophet said. As David Wood did in last session, Muslims are apostatizing even though they don't think they are because they're going against Muhammad and they're failing to perfectly submit to Muhammad. Thank you, Muslims, for showing that you are all unbelievers, apostates, because you don't believe Muhammad or his Quran. Boom! Perfect!